Let's create a high converting ad. Your ad is where you will or will not get the bag. Chances are your first ad is not exactly gonna be excellent. That's why we're not gonna start with just one, but four different ads. Two with the same image, but with different copy, and two with the same video, but with different copy. Okay. This is gonna give you a lot of data to see what is working well. And then you can come back after like four or five days, delete the ads that aren't working, and scale the ads that are. To optimize your ads, click into your ad set, then click into your newly created ad. We've already set up the ad name. We can skip the identity and leave it to the default values. Then we can select create ad or use existing post. If you've got a Facebook ad that you think would work well as an ad, then you can use this option. Most of the time, unless you're like Ty Lopez, your Facebook posts aren't really gonna work well. That's probably why you should stick with the create ad option. So you've got a few options here, image or video, collection or carousel, etc., etc. And Facebook is always updating these. So how do you write high converting ad copy? Copy is actually just essentially the text that we're gonna include inside of the ad. Uh, one idea, and one idea is a good start, is that your ads should be using the 4P approach. P. So it's premise, promise, proof, and push. So one, premise. Everyone who's using these services are just scrolling through. Like why should they stop on your ad? Hook them in with a sentence that's gonna to relate to them. For example, a question. Does your shower lack pressure? Or are you keen for a novel shower experience? Two, promise. What does your product do? Promise that you'll solve a customer's problem or make their life easier. So within the shower idea, it's got twice as much pressure or it's got refreshing mineral ions. Three, proof. Why should people trust your ad? You're gonna to have to try and include in this small space some sort of social proof. Uh, one real cheeky way to do this is just add like five stars, or if your product won any awards, you can include those as well. Four, push. You're gonna to have to encourage your customers as to what you want them to do. Click the link below. Learn more by clicking here. Follow through to our website, something like this. Here's what a completed ad could look like. Other settings might be different for different types of creatives, but for your website URL, always make sure it goes to the product page. The call to action, otherwise known as the CTA, is the actual text that's gonna cover up the button that you choose on your Facebook ad. It's important that your CTA is driving people to click through to convert to your website. And this is where you don't wanna be a scammer. You want your CTA to actually follow through with what it says it will do. Like learn more takes you to the website and it should be all congruent with what that Facebook ad is saying as well. Keep the brand names all the same as the domain, as the Shopify store. Otherwise, people are just gonna lose trust instantly. That's why I'd recommend sticking with Shop Now for CTA, because it just shows people exactly what they're gonna click on, and it's also kind of encouraging them to do what you want, which is to buy the product. Finally, for tracking, make sure you select the Facebook pixel of your store. If it's not working well, like it might be red, then that means it hasn't really relayed the data back and forth from your store to Facebook. It might come back after a couple of days, otherwise you're gonna have to troubleshoot the setup of the pixel or just start a new one. Okay, final step. This is the home stretch. This is where you're gonna to wanna to test and optimize your ad. So as I said at the beginning, if you're a beginner, you're gonna to wanna to just duplicate all of these ads, change the interests, the demographics, the age set, uh, the location and see what is working best. To gauge really what is going well in your ad, you're gonna to wanna to pay special attention to the CTR and the CPC. So CTR is showing unique click-through rate as to how many people actually clicked through to convert on your website. And CPC is showing the cost of each of those clicks. The cost per click is gonna be really influencing your revenue, so you're gonna to wanna to keep that as low as possible. As you get more data, you're gonna do more tests, do different creatives, do different copy, do different images, do different interests, demographics, locations, just test, test, test. Testing, 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 testing. So delete the ads obviously with low purchases and high CPC, and increase the budget on low CPC and high click-through rates to scale your business. Now before we write our ad copy, and just to build on last week's video, let's jump into the ads manager. 
So as a general rule, you're gonna to wanna to start one ad account per business manager if you're starting a new business. Basically, what you'll find down the line is if you get one of these ad accounts suspended and you'll probably have multiple under the same business manager is that because they're all connected under that business manager, they will also all get suspended. So if you've got five ad accounts under one, you're kind of just done for and you have to start the whole process again. Getting your ad account suspended isn't really that big of an issue. It will set you back a couple of days, which is why you should have a couple set up just in case. Uh, it happened to me last week. My ad account got suspended, which is a bit of a shame. But basically we found what happened was we were sending potential customers through the ad from Facebook to the main landing page of fairhead.myshopify.com. But what Facebook wanted us to do was to send people to the product page of the product we were advertising on Facebook. I think it's a bit of a semantic issue in my book, but other than that, uh, it's fair enough and uh, it's a good learning curve. So let's take a look at that ad. So like I said last week in the ads manager, it's all organized into folders. You've got campaigns, ad sets, and then ads. So if we just follow through into the ad, we can see a whole bunch of red error signs. But yeah, I'm just gonna go through and show you the best practices for starting up an ad and some of the results from this ad, even though we run it for a very small amount of time. Obviously, you definitely want your brands to be congruent. So I've got two business managers here and we definitely want it to be under Fairhead because we're selling a Fairhead product, not under Stray Path, which is a video production business. I haven't connected, I haven't even made an Instagram account for Fairhead, but that's something that we will be doing in future because there's lots to learn from affiliate marketing, uh, influencer marketing, and just general tools on Instagram. So when we're starting off, we don't want this button here, dynamic formats and creative to be ticked. Essentially what that is doing is it's gonna try a bunch of different styles of the ad that you create in the feeds that you pick or in the placements that you pick. What we really wanna do right now though is just try out what we think is best and get some data and probably get some sales at the same time. So we want it to be under single image or video because that's all that I've made for this product ad. Anyway, I wrote this all earlier so I didn't have to type it out on camera. So the ad basically starts with waking up just got pure. And then we instantly hit them with a link. Don't miss out. You know, this is kind of flying out the door. You know, I don't, I don't have room, I don't have time, I'm selling them so quickly. You wanna build urgency straight away in that second line and you wanna just direct people where to go. So to make it easy, we've just converted a Biddy link and all that it was was the fairhead.myshopify link to the product page. And then we can expand on exactly what this product is doing. So waking up just got pure with twice as much water pressure, 30% less on your water bill. You'll want to stay under just a little longer. Now it's not exactly grammatically correct. You know, I would probably, if this was like a paragraph in a Medium article or in a Facebook post, it would probably flow something like, waking up just got fewer, your showers now have twice as much water pressure and will save you 30% on your water bill. This being said, you'll wanna stay under just a bit longer. But we just kind of want this to be punchy. We want to hook people in. We want to do a pattern interrupt in their newsfeed. And to make it a little bit more engaging, what you can do is you can just type in like tick emoji, tick emoji text on Google. And then, I mean, you got fysymbols.com and you can just click on any of these that you like. Um, square root, I kind of like that. And it's gonna save it to your clipboard. And that is just sort of saying people like we've done it right you know especially with stats I mean you can even make it pop by using 2x instead of the word twice so it's like tick we've got twice as much water pressure tick you're gonna save 30% on your water bill it's just showing people that they might be missing out they you know that their box isn't crossed their box isn't ticked and you know it's just a little subtle psychological hack that can help you push conversions so, you know, there you go. What else you can do here is you can actually have up to five different headlines. But after you've published it, it's gonna attempt all of the options that you put up. And then later, you can come back to your ads manager and see which one of those headlines performed the best. But for now, what I'm doing is I'm just introducing the same ideas in the headline, just so people know exactly what I want them to do. I'm saying, don't miss out on our mineral rose shower head. It's pretty transparent. I'm just saying, don't miss out on the shower head, man. Don't miss out. This is a cool shower head. So shop now. Nice. 
And then that's another point, just what I said last week, but let's reiterate that you definitely want to be transparent with your customers. You don't want to be misleading. I mean, that's why my Facebook account got banned, even though I didn't even know that would happen. Uh, but hey, learning. What you want to do is you just want to tell them what to do and you also want to be clear about where the link is going to go. That's why I'd recommend using shop now as the call to action. That seems pretty clear. If we go back up to the ad set level, I'm just going to double check that you guys understand what you want to do here. The conversion event needs to be set to purchase. It sounds counterintuitive or maybe it sounds semantic that purchase and add to cart would be different but you are actually telling Facebook what you really want the people who see this ad to do. And that's not just put the product in the cart, that's actually convert, that's actually make a purchase. This little window here is just telling me that because I haven't tried this conversion event, I haven't tested it, it might not work. So let's just go back up to the entire ads manager. And to do that, you wanna go up to the top left, just to the right of the house, expand and collapse side panel, and that will bring you back out to the whole ads manager. Now, this section, when I first looked at it, was just baffling and I had no real clue what to do, which is uh, potentially how you might be feeling. This little column here to the right of view setup underneath ads is gonna help a lot. Click customize columns and you'll be able to see absolutely everything that's going on here. But instead of it being all over the place, you're gonna be able to narrow it in. What you really want to be going for here is unique click-through rate. You want your cost per click to be under one USD. So if you just click columns and then scroll down to the bottom and click customize columns, you can see all of the different variables that are at play. And what you're really aiming for is unique outbound click-through rate. I mean, just to be clear, you can look at absolutely everything in here. It's not all about CTR, but that is an excellent metric that you definitely want to be paying attention to. But definitely have a play around here and have a look at your ads once they've run for a few days and see which variables are performing the best. So once you've duplicated these ad sets, you can go in and change each interest to find which of these ads will perform the best. So if you just go down to detailed targeting, and press edit, you can change these interests. So instead of shower, you could try wash. So instead of shower, try washing. Um, instead of washing for the fair head shower head, we could try eco-friendly. And yeah, you wanna try these in your own time and see which of them perform best. So once you have a higher reach combined with a good low CPC and a higher CTR, that's when you know you're making a step in the right direction in terms of profits. First recommendation is to just test out a few of these placements. Keep it very specific. You're definitely winning. Like the Facebook algorithm is very good at what it does, but you want to make it idiot proof. So make sure you test the placements one at a time and then come back and cut the placements that aren't working very well. As I said last week, duplicate your ads four times and then just pick different placements. You can really easily do this. You can just press Control D or Command D and have four new ads that are identical to the ones you've already made. This is of course under the campaign of CBO, campaign based optimization. The budget of starting for these campaigns is $25 for CBO or $5 per ad set for ABO. At the end of the day, each ad set is worth $5 at a minimum when you're starting out. CBO is a budget allocation strategy and it's gonna be a bit more hands off. It uses the data from the algorithm to delegate your budget through your different ad sets or throughout all of your active ads. Remember, they're all folders, campaigns, ad sets, and ads. So make one, duplicate it four times, and you'll have five new ads to test out. Swap out your interests and your placements, and most of these are gonna fail, so don't spend too much money here. But then after you see which ones are performing best, cut out the others and keep those performers. So the CBO algorithm will put more money into those best performing ads. But again, you're gonna wanna make it idiot proof and check in every now and again and pause those ads that aren't performing well. You're gonna wanna corral the algorithm into saving you money and earning you money. And that is the end of this tutorial. Really hope you like this one. Have a great day.